good morning and welcome to the Lowest Stuff Energy Challenge and this is the pitching day, the day you've all been working towards. At the Aspire Centre in Lowestoft, students from three educational establishments are taking part in an innovative competition. We want to teach people to change and have an impact on the world we live in. There's a lot at stake, with £25,000 prize money available to fund the most convincing in-house energy conservation plans. Sun goes on the solar panel to make the fan work. After nine months preparation, the students are ready to pitch to a panel of judges from Nesta, the National Endowment for Science, Technology and the Arts, and the enterprise agency Make Your Mark. Nesta's role is to build the UK's capacity for innovation, and a really crucial element of that is to support the development of young people's skills and attitudes, because after all, young people are going to be the ones who are solving the big problems in the future. Big problems like climate change, problems that we haven't even come across yet. The effects of climate change are affecting the world, the continent, the country, and our town, Lowestoft. And if everyone does their little bit, it will be, as Louis Armstrong said, a wonderful world. First up is Dean's High School from Lowestoft. There are many benefits to having a wind turbine at the Dean's High School and the most important would be the environmental benefits. So it's successful, this is how we'd like to spend the money. We feel this is the best um, option since energy is generated from a new, renewable, readily available source. To prepare for the pitch, Dean's High School students surveyed where energy was being wasted in their school. They used a special plug that tested the levels of energy consumed by different appliances. They analysed their findings with the help of the environmental charity, the Global Action Plan. So what we thought we'd do is we'd actually take a look at what you found out since we were last in. None of the students switch off any gadgets or appliances in classrooms like during at the end of lesson, break and lunch and the end mm -hmm. of day. And in year 9 and 10 there's no students do it. And in year 11 there's next to none and then teachers is a bit more okay. so I think we need to like be teaching the students about how to switch them off and be more energy efficient. They want to try and look at generating electricity within the school site and reduce our carbon footprint through that route and they're beginning to look at the possibility of buying and setting up a wind turbine at school. Joe. We've been looking at a lot of other ways to save energy as well but we've decided that on the key point that we really do want a wind turbine. Okay. So you've, you've been doing some other evaluation, but you're still focused on that wind turbine. It's an important part of the Lowestoft Energy Challenge that students take the initiative and decide on what research they want to do. The students themselves contacted local school Ellingham Primary, which already has a wind turbine, for more information and used it as a research model. We had Ian and C turn it and they came and um, saw the site and they um, proposed the positioning of the wind turbine. Um, they then wrote a report on all the details of the wind turbine and um, it seems like it, sh it would be fine to go ahead. I think it was quite close. So even though it's going to take eight weeks to get the planning permission, we are really confident that we're going to get this wind turbine we're really going to push to try and get it. So I hope that's given you an overview of our project but I'd just like to remember, this project is not about just building a wind turbine. It's about making a difference, about changing the future for the better. We deserve this money. Our project should be funded. Um, hello, I'm Linus. I'm Joe. We're from Poplars and we're just going to do a presentation about what we've been doing over the last six months. By far the youngest team taking part in the Low Stoft Energy Challenge are the Poplars Primary School pupils. We found out that it takes seven solar panels to power one light bulb. These eight-year-olds have come up with some very ambitious plans to generate renewable energy. This is Louis. Um, my design is um, a like car, and it um, it's powered where the wind turbine goes into a generator, what powers the motor and also the flame, and the solar panel links up to. And the propeller um, at the front, and also the light gives me up to the sort they are very keen and uh, it, that's, that's very useful because you come up, they come up with lots of ideas and some of them are quite bizarre, some of them are undoable, but some of them will be 
maybe on the money and uh, you know we have to give them the opportunity to talk about them and, and trial them out. And as part of their research, the Poplar's pupils invited the Green Energy Machine to school to offer some hands-on experience. Essentially, it's um, a bus that opens out into a display unit uh, of alternative energy sources and capabilities. But it allows children to go in and interact with all the kits that they have, turbines, solar energy panels. So uh, that, that's very interesting for children to actually see. The sun shines on the panel, what's going to happen to the water? Heats up. Heats up, all right. Has anybody seen it on the roof of a house? Largely they've been working on uh, solar energy panels and uh, wind turbines of uh, a pilot size and to find out the viability of the equipment that we, we hope to purchase. So even though there's some cloud and it's not as perfectly sunny, it's still warmed up, this plate. and the pupils went one step further and implemented their own energy-saving plan. Four children a week are energy officers and their job is basically to be a, a, an irritant to everybody else by switching all their lights off, uh, shutting all doors and things of that sort. So we try to keep the place warm without uh, uh, too much energy being wafted out of windows as well. Um, we've been closing doors and turning off lights to try to save some energy for our school. I think it's very important because it also helps planets because it stops carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere. As a science teacher, Ian Sneddon also saw an opportunity to write the energy challenge into his science curriculum. Well, the curriculum had uh, been rewritten by me so that all of Year 4 children would get an understanding of what we're talking about and how they, how they understand energy at this point. Obviously, they're only eight, nine-year-olds, so it has to be pitched at the right level. The last pitch is from students at Lowestoft College. This is our energy um, challenge, basically. It's changing the environment, how we can get the community and everyone like that involved. Um, we wanted to bring some shock tactics in and use big posters and say, look, we're out here, we want to make a difference. The main ideas for this pitch came out of a workshop with the Global Action Plan team. What's the project idea? What are the benefits of the idea for the environment, for the school, the college and the local community? GAP was a great resource to pull on because it actually helped the students look at possible ideas but also gave them the support to actually see how it could be made more realistic. About three years ago, um, someone created a sculpture called the Wee Man, which is waste, electronic and electrical equipment. It's a giant sculpture made entirely from the amount of electronic waste one person would generate in their lifetime. The students decided to make a waste material sculpture in the shape of a tree. Working on a replica was a challenge that engineering student Emma took up. Um, this is a model that we made to represent what we actually want to make, as in wee tree. Um, we've used things like pipe, gas pipe and stuff to sort of make model exhausts. Coke cans, as in that's what the um, oil drums are going to be. Um, the washers are going to be the washing machine windows. The reason we've made, we want to make it 12 foot is because it will be big, it will be in your face, and if it's all eco-friendly and trying to save as much of the planet as we can. Right, we uh, discussed biofuel and um, there are a lot of potentials with it. There's even, we've even got some, apparently we've got some college staff have already checked into it, done some research on it. So apparently we've got all the oil, everything now already on, on site. The motor mechanics department was keen to champion converting cars to using biofuel. So we now need to look at what we're going to have to change on this particular vehicle to bring it into a use with biodiesel. Because the biodiesel is very aggressive, they could attack the plastic or the rubber in here. What is great is the students will get on the hands-on experience, so when they finish their course and go out into the industry, they're already up in the forefront of sort of like new change in motor vehicle technology. <laughs> The carpentry department has also been involved. The carpentry team actually highlighted with their students that there was a vast amount of waste being produced from the carpentry and the boat building department in the form of sawdust and wood shavings. 
at the moment that goes directly to a waste company which I presume goes to landfill. Um, so what we're actually looking at doing is collecting that waste using a compactor with bid money to then produce briquettes that people can use either on fires or barbecues. At Lursal College we waste um, two big green bins full of rubbish every day on wood chippings and stuff like that. Those wood chippings were compacted into something like that that we could then use for either heating or something like that to then cut down on energy bills around college. The actual bit of it, which is the main bulk, which is the bit that puts it all and everything, squishes it together. Can be we can get for five thousand pounds. The rest of it, which is like the feeding and the hopper bit, we can make ourselves. Is there any questions? Thanks very much. At the Aspire Centre, the pitching session is over. When we first started this project uh, nine months ago, um, we were looking at a, a group of young people who didn't really know what they were doing and they weren't really sure how they fit together. And to see them now, they look like young business people. The Poplar's children have had to go home, but the older students are keeping their fingers crossed for a positive result. All this time we've been building up to this presentation and to have just done it and it gone so well, you know, it is. But, you know, we are happy it went so well. I think the presentation went really well. We, again, we managed to get quite a few of our points across. You know, it was really good to see the Poplar's representatives and the college representatives working with our group. Hopefully we've been successful. So, yeah, we should get it, hopefully. So, after all the hard work, was it worth it? Dean's High School received £25,000 to build a wind turbine to generate electricity. On the energy conservation front, the students are planning events and a poster campaign to persuade the school and the local community to stop wasting energy. Poplar's primary school was given £2,000 to pursue energy generation options. And the pupils are well on their way to saving energy by continuing their monitoring system. The Lowestoft College Energy Group was awarded a grant of nearly £16,000 to implement building a waste sculpture, converting cars to using biofuel, and compressing waste sawdust into fuel logs. As a pilot project, the Lowestoft Energy Challenge has been a success. The hope is that the scheme will go nationwide. We're going to have a teaching pack available for teachers at primary, secondary and FE level. Um, because we want to show that this is the kind of thing that you could do in any school um, and we hope that our teachers throughout the country will think this is a good idea because it's a way of empowering their students to use their scientific knowledge but also knowledge they have from their other subjects about their community, about their written skills, about their presentation skills and bringing all of those things together. The panel of judges uh, I think has been hugely impressed by the quality of the ideas that the young people have described to us and also the passion and the professionalism with which the young people carried out their pitches. Uh, I've been amazed by the quality of the ideas today and I'm really looking forward to working with these teams in the future to make these ideas real.